Um, can you just take us to the chapel and just slowly go through what happened that day before the riot kicked off? Yes. Um, well, the riot kicked off on the 1st of April, 1990. Um, actually, everybody thought it was April Fool's, but it wasn't. It wasn't, It's no. just a coincidence that it fallen on that day. Um, mm. It was more or less pre-orchestrated, mm -hmm. you know, by a very few. And nobody had expected to go to the extent it went. To be perfectly honest, but it it, 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 it it was beneficial that whether it went to that extent or not, that it got out what was happening in the prison system. And as a result of the riot taking place was about the conditions within the prison system. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of discontent, how people were being treated, conditions, etc. And it came to fruition that Enough was enough. We've had enough of this. Something has to be done about the situation. Sacrifices have to be made. Consequences have to be taken on the chin. And on that day in the chapel, um, I was one of the few who was prepared to make that sacrifice. And I knew that the moment it kicked off, and it did kick off, it kicked off really bad. Um, and... A couple of the lads stood up immediately with sticks. Yeah. One particular individual made a speech um, criticising the prison system. And I think that was the cue for everybody to go, let's go for it. But, it, but, but the few that went for it spurred those that didn't know nothing about it. And I think that was coupled with the frustrations and the anger because yeah. of the situation. And um, kicked off in the chapel. So that guy grabbed the priest's microphone, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he took the microphone. Then, then the priest at that time was giving a sermon called some blessings of the heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I'm not religious. No, I'm not by the stretch of the imagination. I'm an atheist yeah. by nature. Um, and was there, he, was there an atmosphere? Yeah, you could cut the atmosphere. But I think... Well, I don't think I know now from reading the transcripts, I mean, the um, depositions at the time, I was waiting to go on trial, two trials, that they've already received information from a grass that it was going to kick off in the chapel. I was going That's to say, why... I'm surprised it even got through because there's a lot of people talking about Ah, me. well, I'll come to that, yeah. to be perfectly honest, um, because there was more prison warders in attendance what there usually is. Ah, of course. And furthermore, there was no sex offenders on the right-hand side of the chapel at the top. Well, they usually are. Which they usually is in yeah. attendance. Um, but hence, that didn't stop the, the altercations. That didn't stop it proceeding to what it did. And um, that didn't stop a few screws getting a couple of hidings. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't stop um, the vicar getting a black eye. Well, the ones who got the hidings must have deserved it. They must have give hidings out. Of course. Well, whether they deserved it or not, what you've got to understand that they're all in it together. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't exempt you because you've not done nothing untoward to me as a prisoner that you've stood there and, and are quite uh, audacious to ignore what's happened to a prisoner. You're watching all your screwmates, you know, being abusive to mm -hmm. a prisoner. Um, probably, and I would say yes, um, assaulting a prisoner. So it makes you no know better than them. No, I was. If you've got any models, any values about you, intervene. Yeah. As an individual, stand but, up and say the, something. Yeah, stand up and be a man. Yeah. Go against the odds. I but, was in Walton in '92, and um, I seen the Mufti squad there going on people, and they was not they were ruthless, really, like smashing their heads against the wall and everything. The, Disgusting behaviour. It is disgusting behaviour. Dragging which, them down the metal stairs, you know, it's just like just. Threads banging on the stairs like that and they're dragging them to the hole. It's it, wrong, it's just wrong. Yeah, it, It's wrong, but unfortunately, because they, find, they signed the um, official secrets act, you know, gives them immunity for any form, any form of prosecution. That's exactly what it does. Yeah. And that's wrong because he's giving them a ticket, do what you want with prisoners. They'd roll you up with mattresses and kick the shit out of you so you don't actually bruise from the outside. Yes. Because yes. pr prior to the riot, you'd ex uh, um, experienced extreme violence and extreme racism on yourself from the guards? Absolutely. I mean, from the onset, I went into the prison system. Don't get me wrong, I didn't enter the prison system with the intent of being violent. Gratuitous, violent, 
that that wasn't my intention. He, he, he didn't even enter my conscience. You know, I went in there on my man because I committed a crime. But as a result of their already set behaviour, bully boy tactics, intimidation tactics, exploitation tactics, which they carry, they thought they could portray this, these three things on myself. And you're not one to sit down and take it? No, don't get me wrong, I was a young lad. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll be honest. Um, and I was segregated from my co-accused and placed down the segregation unit. Now, let me explain something about the segregation unit that had their own psychological rule outside the rule box, and it was this. Don't walk across the main floor, walk adjacent to the wall on the two tiles. Um, I wasn't aware of that. It was my co cane. cane. Um, and as we're walking across the floor, a couple of the prison warders became very abusive, derogatory, racist, in other words. Yeah. And I know it sounds hypothetical what I'm going to say, but I don't think it was directed at myself or Kane. But obviously it was. Kane was placed in the cell. I was marched further down the corridor. And just as I was entering the cell, a screw came behind me, punched me in the back of the head, said, you merging black, black, black bastard, and just slammed the door. And don't get me wrong, my initial reaction was, was one of, I was stunned, I was frightened, yeah. I was anxious. I was only a young lad myself. Later 19 on, years of, 19 years of age, yeah. you know, in an environment that was not alien, but alien in certain respects. And scary, isn't it? It was scaring, and it, it, it was the un, unknown what was going to happen once that door opened, what's going to transpire. But something inside me said to me, I'm not prepared to put up with this. Mm. I'm not. Even though I have the negative feelings, even though I was frightened, etc., I said, No, I'm coming out fighting. And if this is the way it's going to be, so be it. And when that door opened, I was outnumbered, but I came out fighting. And from that point on, it spiralled out of control for the next 13, 14 years. So going back to the chapel then, microphones being grabbed, there was a mood on the yard, the sex offenders aren't there, and now what are the prisoners doing? You said they picked the sticks and balaclavas, is it next? Yeah, yeah, there was balaclavas put on, there were sticks drawn, Yeah, you know, um, there was warders being booted, punched, you know. Um, there was um, basically the chapel was being demolished, to put it in a finer term. Now everyone was there. Would they, would they all gain for it? Like, oh, people there just because they sort of got roped in. I, I would say they got roped in. Yeah. Some knew, some didn't know, but. You've got to realise on the whole, collectively, a lot of prisoners carry a lot of frustrations, anger and bitterness because of the confinement, you know, um, because of the resentment, how they're being treated. So this was a golden opportunity to vent it without no repercussions at that moment. And not seeing the loved ones and their jobs. All that comes into play. I mean, yeah. the, 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 the virtue of imprisonment, it, it carries a lot of, how can I put it, constraints, you know, and the fact that you can't see your family, as you rightfully say, you can't do what you want to do. You're confined. No. It carries a heavy, 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 heavy burden on that person. And it doesn't distract from the fact that, equally so, their next of kins are carrying that burden and all. Yeah, because it's not just you doing your time, it's the family. But you don't realise that, do you? Um, I think they do realise that, but some people are, 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 are sublime to it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they sort of like... I mean, personally, myself, myself, I learned to switch off my emotions when I was in prison. I turned animalistic. You go prison mode? Yes. Yeah. You know, um, but that was my choice. And no doubt there's other prisoners who do similar or less. But it's one way of coping with the situation. I'd make sure I'd never have a girlfriend when I was getting sent down. I'd make sure I'd have... I wouldn't be going through that, oh, is she dead, Jeremy, what's she doing and all that. Because, I mean, you can sit in your bunk and... You drive yourself your mad. Head. You go, oh, yeah. You drive yourself mad. But that's that person's fault, the individual. Yeah. He's insecure. Yeah, exactly. I can't blame, I can't blame the girlfriends and the wives. No. 
you know, they didn't put you in that situation. You put yourself in that situation. Exactly. So you've got to cope with it the best way you can. And you've got to be prepared for the consequences. Because you know it's got to come. Of course. Yeah. Yes. You know. So they pick the sticks up, Bally's on, guards are shitting themselves, they're getting out of there. How does it get from the chapel to the roof? Um, how it got to that situation? Because at that time, they were doing reconstruction ah. in the central rotunda. So from the floor to the top of the rotunda, which was 80 feet, yeah. there was scaffolding all the way around. Right. They made it so, nice and handy for you, didn't they? <laughs> so, precisely. Might as well give you the ladder. <laughs> um, people presume that a week prior to that, two lads already got on the roof. You know, and that was, um, that preempted the main riot. Yeah. But that had nothing to do with it. Just doing their own demonstration. Mm -hmm. But equally so, if these two can get up, anybody else can get up. Give you food for thought. Of course. 